What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Still kind of pissed off from yesterday's playoff result. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I'm okay. <laughs> All right. Well, unfortunately, these things happen, but there's always next year, right? <laughs> I don't know. It might be the same th- same thing. Well, you know what's so funny is it's not even my team. My team already got eliminated. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a big Celtic fan. You know they got washed in five games, but I really thought the Rockets would beat the Warriors. And you know, given the people that that uh, uh Durant and company being out, some of them being out. I don't know. You you keep you're familiar with some basketball, right, Keith? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I know I'm over rambling. It might sound like it's foreign language. <laughs> nah. But uh, um, outside of that, though, yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. That's good. So uh, what would you think of last night's show? I know we talked a little bit offline, and it seemed like we had a little bit of a different opinion on the show. I thought it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. the majority of it. You know, I, I don't know if it's because you know where i watched that because i i do i did read the results too after watching on youtube and i felt like youtube didn't have as much as it normally does but it really just came and went for me there was really nothing that i walked away from that it kind of just stuck out to me and i'm not saying that's necessarily bad but uh yeah it just kind of just came and went for me yeah well it's uh this was part or night two i guess from uh or the second set of tapings from um the fallout of rebellion uh so we did have brian cage on the shelf there was a lot of the main eventers showcased in last week's episode so they were kind of missing from this week's episode so they kind of let the uh undercard and the rest of the roster kind of get on this show but uh like i said i i enjoyed it for what it was uh we opened with moose and josh alexander versus lax um not a real shocker here with LAX picking up the victory. Um, I mean, the North wasn't represented in its normal fashion with Moose in for Ethan Page because he was going to face RVD later on. Um, so a little miscommunication. Moose accidentally hits Alexander with a pump kick. LAX is able to capitalize, and they pin Alexander for the victory. So, I mean, you could say this, was, uh, this wasn't great for Alexander. But um, I guess since the the whole dynamic of the North, the true team wasn't represented here, I I guess I I can give it a pass for that. Right. I think you can go with the whole miscommunication is what led to their downfall. uh, Yeah, their downfall. So, you know, still, I'm not particularly too much a fan of, you know, a guy who, you know, he hasn't really been uh an impact that long and you already kind of have him losing his second third match i mean we've we've seen this before though um and a lot of that just has to do with how thin the roster is i think we look at it in it sometimes and be and be thinking to ourselves like they got a really talented bunch which is true but the problem is they don't really have too many lower tier people to the point where they can help put over the people that you want to put over. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, whether you're bringing in a new talent or you got plans for a certain mid card talent in order to get over, uh, you know, that main event act, you know, it's going to come at the expense of one of the, one of the two. So, and um, it's unfortunate, but anyways, like I said, you know, miscommunication and obviously LAX, they're the tag team champs. You want to make them look strong. So, I mean, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, but, it, you know, it's it's tough with LAX being the title holders. They've kind of – this has just been their thing. They kind of run through everybody. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, every rain we've seen this. Like, in, in LAX is an awesome team. But when you're – when you make them champion, it takes away the opportunity for anyone else to really get over in a sense. Because yeah. – you know, we always see they, you know, because they got to, you know, have somebody to face. They run through teams and then and then they they end up getting stale. You know, I was le- reading some of the comments in the comment section and there's a couple people that are like, man, I'm so tired of them being champions. Like they've become the well. If, mm-hmm. you know, when when in doubt, you know, go back to them. I'm surprised we haven't had uh, just a minor separation between the two and have them as like singles starts just, you know, more, you know, for a, 
a small period of time before putting him back. But I think after this title reign, I mean, whenever <laughs> this ends, um, they, they, I think that's something they should look at just to try something new to freshen it up. Yeah, and um, it, it seems, well, at least the rumors are that Impact really wants to L, uh, lock up LAX long term and doesn't seem like they've been able to do that yet. So I don't know what, if that's part of why they put the titles on them a lot is to keep them happy, even though, you know, that may ne- not necessarily be the case. It could be. Um, to me, that, that's a little bit concerning if you know, you're feeling like, hey, I got to, you know, put the titles on you just to keep you guys around when they've already held them before. But that's the reason why what the company has to do just for any of these divisions always have a couple of uh, guys, gals or teams that you can be able to elevate just in the case that you do end up losing an LAX. I don't think they'll lose them, but I mean, if they were that way, you're not left empty handed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's for sure. Uh, so then we have uh, Madison Rain being interviewed by Melissa. Madison tells us she's 2-0 and against Taya. She thought that once you beat the champion, you get a title shot. However, Taya doesn't want to be a fighting champ or 30-day uh, title defense. And tonight she says she's going to be 3-0 and against her. So them building up that match. Uh, then we see Tommy Dreamer rally the troops for their main event match, 4-on-4 uh, four four versus OVE. Um, did was this available on YouTube? No, I didn't no. see this one. No, oh, yeah, no, he was just the setup. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, he was just literally rallying all of them, and he had a huge speech about you know standing together and things like that. It, it was it was good. It was a good Tommy Dreamer promo. Um, and then we had that Madison Rain versus Tessa match uh, versus Tessa versus Taya. Tessa was on commentary, so it seems like. Um, they're going in the direction of turning Tessa to be a babyface. What a forced way to do so. Um, I When I was listening to her commentary, it just seemed like a complete 180. Um, well, I mean, they, they did say that, you know, Gail did kind of give Tessa a newfound respect for Gail. So, I mean, I, I guess that was them them doing it. I don't know. I just think with her character and the way that she had been built as, you know, the top heel, not not only in the division, but you just argue in the company, one of the top heels in the company. I think some on some with certain individuals, I think a slow burn better serve. Like, you know, I get, you know, she was being complimentary of Gail and um, <clears throat> excuse me. But I really like to have her, you know, see her keep her edge. But, you know, she's over here laughing <laughs> on commentary and all that. And not laughing, like, sarcastically. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> like, they're at happy hour or something. So That was um, when, I think, uh, I don't know, I think Don had mentioned that he was hoping that Tessa would come out and slug Josh Matthews. And Tessa was like, oh, no, it's just because Josh gives me a hard time on Around the Ring. And then she started laughing and stuff like that. And I was like, yep, it's happening. <laughs> um so just right off the bat even though after the result of this match the first thing that came to my mind was she it's probably going to be her versus Taya at Slammiversary um with that said as far as the match look I know there's some especially me who was a fond of Madison Rain returning and kind of being put in the role that she has been put in but given where there's really no one that's in contention for the knockouts championship. I get it. And I can appreciate the story that they told with Madison already holding two victories over Taya and now getting her third one, even though, you know, it seemed pretty, you know, out of nowhere because Taya tapped relatively quick, oh. but, but, uh, um, nonetheless, this sets up a title match. Yeah, and now I, I want to, you know, compliment Taya on this match because I thought she worked a very good heel match. Like, just constant trash talking, slowing the pace down. Just It, it was just a typical heel match. I think she, she did a really good job with that, and I think since they've been able to separate her from Johnny a little bit, it's let her be in the spotlight rather than, you know, her kind of by Johnny's side. Um, but I think Taya 
tapping out very quick was just her going, it's a non-title match. It doesn't matter. I don't have to win. As long as I show up during the title matches and win, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah, I think wins and losses don't matter. They do not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I guess that's a way to look at it. Yeah, and credit to her too. Um, I really think ever since Johnny le- lost the world title, it's really given Taya an opportunity to kind of do her own thing. And I kind of wish this is what we had seen before. But yeah. You know, nonetheless, we're going to get a title match. Did they announce it for next week or so? I or? don't believe so, but um, I wouldn't be. I think it'll probably be a couple weeks down the road. And I mean, there's a good story with that because it's like you're 0 3 against Madison. Can mm-hmm. you finally beat Madison? Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and that's fine. I have no problems with the way they did that. No, they, what did they announce next week? I think they announced uh, Disco's return, uh, Elgin versus Rich Swan, uh, the Demon Collar match, which we'll get to soon, and I think that's that's about it. And then the Battle Royal, right? Uh, I don't know if that's next week. I know that was advertised when they were doing the Philly tapings, but I, I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and then we have... Uh, Melissa interviewing RVD about his match. He uh, he does what he set out to do. He you know put down Ethan Page and basically said it's all about RVD. And uh, we will get into all of that a little later on. Uh, then we have the Rosemary promo, which she challenges Sue to a Demon Collar match. Um, which you know I, I love stipulation matches, and I, I like this idea considering you know the Demon Collar has been used recently. Um, do you think, I guess, this feud has warranted a match like this? Because I had brought up to you while we were offline about, uh, like, Sammy and Swan having, like, a dog collar match or something like that, just because I felt like the feud had warranted it. I don't know if this feud has really gone those lengths yet, or it's just because they're both similar characters that they're automatically meant to have this giant feud. I think, yeah, given that who the characters are, I think they just feel the way to kind of gain interest is having some type of a gimmick match as such. I think if you just said on paper, <clears throat> excuse me, Rosemary versus Sue Young, um, okay, like I think the general consensus is that's something that people might have seen before. But, you know, anytime you put a stipulation and especially involving Rosemary, you know, you think about what she's had. The uh, was it was it the demon dance mm-hmm. or um, I forgot the other one that she had. The red she... wedding match. Well, that that, that, oh, was, that was supposed that, to happen. Yeah, it got scrapped. Yeah. So I just think you know, given what her character is, I think that's what would build intrigue. And even Sue Young too. When Sue Young had, I think, the last rights match, and you know, and I know it's funny because a lot of times in the end, especially in like in in some of these matches, they're just essentially hardcore matches. But I I think it gains interest in. Um, I'm just wondering if, you know, normally when you do these type of um, uh, gimmick matches, do, you know, that's the way to blow off a feud. But I'm not of, you know, the mindset that this is the end of this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's kind of what I was alluding to. But uh, that, like I said, it should be it should be good. Um, and then we had Jordan Grace versus Alexa Nicole. Alexia Nicole. Uh, this was. I guess a showcase match for Grace after her loss to Ty at the pay-per-view. Uh, she went over here. Not a huge surprise. I-, I guess, right? That seems like what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, just a way to give her a win, a win? Uh, put yeah. her in the win column and stuff. It kind of just makes you wonder what if they would have done the Madison stuff with Ty first and then had her face Jordan. Because now I, I kind of just get this feeling with Jordan and, you know, I guess down the road they can always revisit it. But she's just going to be in the background. You know, you got your title shot. You lost. lost, And then now you just kind of fade in the background. Yeah. And, and I know we use that a lot. But it's just, you know, there's only so many people that they have sometimes. So, you know, you end up running out of people and then having to turn people. Like, because a, a part of me in this match when I was watching, I, and I thought maybe I was just looking too much into it. But I was like... Are they gonna turn Jordan Hill? And it's like, Jesus, man! Like the nah. Hill face face alignments, man, is just is so much to keep up with. Yeah, well, it's much easier to write for heels. So, 
That's what they do. True. Uh, then we had Josh Alexander and Ethan Page backstage. Alexander says he'll be in Ethan's corner tonight because they are a team. Um, yeah. Then we have Melissa interviewing Kiera. Kiera says she tried to be friends with everyone, but it's gotten her nowhere. Jordan walks up, asks what's going on. Kiera wonders what she wants. Jordan says we're friends. Obviously, Kiera doesn't feel that way. She says she doesn't need friends, and she closes by saying Rosemary can die like Allie. So just like what you were talking about, it looks like they're going into a uh, Kiera heel turn. (laughs) I spoke too soon, huh? (laughs) Yeah, which, I mean, I I felt like, I don't know, she could have been a pretty big baby face like they were doing with Allie for before they had turned her. You know, I'm still surprised they still mention Allie by name. Um, you know, it's been months now since she's departed the company. Um, and I, I know it just goes with the storyline, but I'd rather them not even mention her anymore personally. Yeah. Um, I guess a feud between Grace, that's still a, probably a way to get Grace over I don't understand what it really does for <laughs> Kiera. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just weird. <laughs> I know, and I just mentioned, I said, it looks like Grace might be in the yeah. background. But they found something for her. Mm-hmm. So they'll probably be feuding for a month, a couple months or so. Yeah, I, I feel like it probably be better suit do a heel turn against like Alicia or someone like that. Right. Just, just to gain some momentum for her because, you know, I don't. I mean, are they really going to put her over Jordan if they do go into a feud? Probably not. I yeah. mean, it's not even believable given you look at the way that they book Jordan as like, what, a female uh, Steiner and then, you know, little uh, uh, Kiera. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless they book her like Madison. I, I mean, I I <laughs> thought the route that they might go would have been Kiera versus Rosemary, which I was in, interested in that just for the simple fact it's something fresh, you know. Yeah. You, you can buy, especially if you're trying to do the heel turn with um, Kiera, you can buy her, you know, stealing some wins from Rosemary. But against Grace, you know, she's going to get squashed like a bug. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um... So then we had the awaited return of RVD in his return match against Ethan Page. Oh, boy. (laughs) So they managed to make the North look like a bunch of morons. Oh, before that, and this might have been my first time ever catching this, but, you know, they revert (laughs) talking about how RVD is one of the pretty much like the pioneers of... Uh, medical marijuana. <laughs> Talk, they, I, I heard you... some. Yeah, there was some mention about it. I just shook my head. <laughs> I was surprised, you know, because I, I know, given the climate that we live in now, you know, you know, depending whatever your opinions on, it's not that it's so much it's bad, but normally. Folk, you know, a wrestling company ain't gonna talk about it. You can insinuate somebody's under the influence, but they don't, you know, talk about it. You know, it's no different than talking about, you know, alcohol and stuff. But, you know, look, I'll say this compared to United as we stand, he did look better here. Mm-hmm. So I gotta give him that much. Um, yeah, I they made Alexander look like a goof in this match. <laughs> I get him trying to, you know, assist, help assist Ethan, but. Yeah, and then as far as with Ethan, and once again, this is a prime example. The roster, while there's potential, in order to push somebody, someone has to lose. They don't have enough lower tier people. Like, because the the one thing I was thinking, like, well, you know, they could have had him face Rohit, and I know that might seem like why would RV RVD face a guy like Rohit, but no, Rohit. No, no, keep going. I I just have an idea about that. I was just saying, you know, Rohit, you know, he's he's a lower level guy and this is RVD. But I mean, that way you're not, you know, ha- uh, having somebody lose that you got plans for. And like the North, you know, they were looking like somebody that might be a threat to LAX, like a legitimate threat to LAX. And, you know, in the, in the same night, you have them both lose. And, you know, the partner of uh, Ethan Page looks like a, you know, a goof. So yeah. hard to take them serious. I mean, they could have went that route with, uh, you know, RVD being the the quote unquote stoner and thing like that. And, you know, the Desi Hit squad coming up and like killing his high and stuff like that. 
Yeah, you could have done that, or I'll tell you even one better. Like you, you, you've been running something with Rohit, and I know obviously this has been taped, but you know he's talking about not getting a spot. You had had him coming out, cutting out a promo, how you know they're being disrespected by you know, and then some guy who's you know from yesteryear comes in taking their spot. You could have ran that where RVD you know beats them up. You know what I mean? It's no, it's no right. loss. I just think you know using. Someone like a Ethan Page, which I thought Ethan Page in this did look good from his part. And, you know, to give RVD his first win over a talent that you have plans for, I just, I, I don't know. I don't get the decision behind it. Yeah, I don't know. I guess just because RVD is, well, RVD, he knows all the tricks and he knows what's going to happen. And he's faced situations like that before. So he's just the veteran that knows what's going on. I don't know. Grasping, man. <laughs> and what would Don say? He said he looks like he hasn't missed a beat. <laughs> he looks like RVD from 20 years ago. <laughs> Don says a lot of things. <laughs> oh, man, man, man. He does. <laughs> oh, man. And then we got an injury update from Brian Cage, which, you know, it really wasn't much of an injury update because we've heard a lot of this stuff being talked about on uh, Twitter and whatnot. Uh, so we have Michael Elkin. He's interviewed by the investigative reporter. He's obviously proud of putting Cage and Pentagon on the shelf. Johnny walks up, tells the reporter to get lost, and Johnny believes he put Cage in the hospital. You know, they were basically reiterating what was talked about last week, and then they uh, they actually brought up Elgin's match with Willie Mack at Code Red and said that, you know, he wasn't able to put Willie in the hospital like he had hoped. And, um, you know, Elgin says that he... He still has time to send Willie to the hospital, and now he's going to hope that, you know, the ambulance has room for two because he's going to send Johnny as well. But, I mean, it was – I like the fact that they tried to incorporate the – I guess if you want to call it a house show as being canon rather than it just falling by the wayside. Well, I mean, they have no other direction at this moment because you have – you know, normally you would have him talking about how he's number one contender and he's going to call out Brian Cage. But with Brian Cage, you know, being on the shelf, you can't go that route. So you have to find an alternative. Yeah, which is interesting that they made mention that he put Pentagon on the shelf. I mean, we did hear rumors that Pentagon was injured after – that triple threat match last week, but I don't think anything else came out. And, you know, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, neither Pentagon or Phoenix were at the Philly tapings. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if, you know, reading too much into it or uh, that was them writing them off. I mean, we'll we'll see. I mean, I guess since they're in the montage for Slammiversary, they still have to be with the company because, yeah, I mean... Uh, you know, we seen like with Eli, he was promoted with the rebellion at the rebellion pay per view, and um, yeah. Oh no, that's right. He he wasn't there. So, <laughs> um, you know what? I I uh, uh, yeah. I think it's just a wait and see. Um, who knows? I know that the rumor back was they think that they might be exclusive. <laughs> But uh, we won't know until something's released. I think with a lot of things, whether it's good or bad, a lot of it's speculation. You know, we all can think one thing, but until Impact or someone else reports that, hey, such and such is no longer with the company, I mean, we can just speculate for at this point. That's true. If they're not on TV, then uh, I guess they're not with them. But we'll obviously we'll see down the line if that is true. Uh, then we had a four corners tag match: uh, the Desi Hit Squad versus the Deaners versus the Rascals versus Brett Banks and Aiden Prince. Uh, this was a short match with the uh, Desi Hit Squad going under the radar and rolling up Cody Deaner for the win. Yeah, this, this came out of nowhere for me. Yeah, man. I mean, and I was genuinely surprised that uh, the Hit Squad actually got a win. So uh, good for them. Yeah. Even if it meant nothing, it's still a win for them. Right. And it wasn't on explosion. You know, I thought what it did, too, it kind of cut because uh, it, it, I, I thought there was a sequence with the Deaners where they were kind of getting the crowd really riled up. Mm -hmm. And then you just get the pin out of nowhere. I, I, yeah, I really doubt it leads to anything. I think well, this this was probably just to, you know, I, from the complaining online from Rohit, you know, to finally give them a win. Which I think that actually came out after 
you know, I mean, this was taped before that actually came out. So. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, true. but um, I believe it was uh, I think it was Jake something who had tweeted out that you know the Hit Squad got a quick victory and then they challenged him to a match at uh, during the twenty three hundred tapings. So. They are at least doing a little something, but I don't know if that'll fly under the radar and they actually mention that when that match does take place. Well, that's good for both teams because it gives the Deaner something to do. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, Desi hit squad. You know, I mean, we're talking about talent. You need to have some talent that somebody can get over on. I mean, <laughs> they're the premier <laughs> get over, get somebody over talent. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then we have a killer cross promo, uh, which... Not a surprise here. Very, very good. Uh, He mentions, he says, there is a a line between insane and genius. Which one of us has stepped over that line? So, uh, I mean, they're they're doing a good job here. Uh, Killer Cross cut this promo with uh, Kenny in hand and, you know, kind of alluding that they're very similar, except, you know, one stands on one side of that line, the other one stands on the other. So I think they, they promoted that match, I believe, next week. You know, it's just crazy. They seem like they really don't have anything for Cross. I mean, Especially they're putting how quick a... that was. What? What? Wait, what? Like Cross interfered last week in his match. This week they have a promo. Next week they have a match. Like I, I guess they could drag it on, but it just seems like that that was pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just it's crazy. You. you I'm surprised. <clears throat> Cross isn't working higher on the card. I get it. Not everybody can be in the title picture. And I guess you can argue he had his chance. But, man, it's just, you know, it looks like they just, at this point, they throw him in random things. And, you know, credit to him for getting it over and getting interest, whoever um, he's working with. But just, man, a lot of this just seems so, like, random. Even when he was uh, talking to Willie Mack a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah nothing just... has come of that. It just come, it just comes out of nowhere, but um, you know, at, at least it's him on the TV screen because his character, he probably has the best character in Impact. Yeah, I would say so. But I mean, you know, you, you can't. It just seems like, I guess he's kind of thrown into that Eli role, and I think that was one of the fears we had. Well, it seems too, and I think we talked about this. I think we're seeing, you know, the direction with the company. It seems more of a work rate base thing, uh, character. Mm. So I think you can be a bland character, but if you can work well in the ring, your chances are you're going to get a significant push in, you know, um, airtime. Whereas if you're more character, like, because Cross, I'm not saying he's a terrible wrestler. I don't think he's terrible. But, you know, if you're somebody that goes by the four-star, five-star matches, uh, I don't know too many of them that he's had, you know. So, But he's more a character guy. Same mm-hmm. thing with Eli. Eli was more of a character guy. So, and it's just my opinion. I'm sure plenty will disagree, and that's fine. But I just noticed, like, a lot of the guys that seem to, you know, be prominently featured are in big roles they seem to be work rate guys. Yeah, no, no, I would, I would agree with that. And it just kind of seems like the theme, or I should say the direction the company has been moving in. Um, but then we have uh, LAX joining the Rascals in their little circle. Uh, I thought this segment was pretty entertaining. It was good to see LAX kind of in a different light. Um, it seems like they're planting the seeds for an LAX and Rascals feud. However, I think feel like it would have made more sense to have the Rascals win that four corners match and then talk about, you know, they should they deserve to get a shot at the champs. Yeah, I mean, you could have it would have been something to build off of, but you know, instead they chose a Desi Hit squad which <laughs> you know, next week when or so I don't I'm you know, I'm just throwing stuff out there. <laughs> they won this tag match, but they won't be getting a title shot. It'll probably be somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you are correct. And then that brings us to the main event, and that was OVE versus a Dreamer, Swan, Mac, and Falaba. This was an OVE rules match. Uh kind of fast pace car crash anything goes match um i thought it was entertaining uh i felt like this could have been easily a pay-per-view match just because it seemed like they were going all out with uh with things we saw a couple of good spots uh dave chris hit a double stomp onto a barbed wire chair which was on fala's chest um the legos came out which um uh, 
Don obviously had to tell us again that hurting, stepping on one of these hurts. And then uh, we see Fowler try to run across the ring, and he goes through the Legos, which which I did get a chuckle out of that, I will admit. Um, and then eventually Sammy gets his victory, hitting the Cactus Special on Willie Mac on top of the Legos. What would you think of this year? Um, you know, the first thing I thought was, I'm like, <laughs> am I in uh, 99, you know, ECW? <laughs> um, no, on, on a but serious wait, note. there's more. <laughs> We're going to the ECW arena next week. Oh, so I'm, 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 a, I'm a week. I'm a week early. Yeah, I'm, I'm a week early. Um, I, first off, it just feels kind of like I feel like I, we've seen this match before. Not so much the um, OVE rules with these participants, but just these participants. Um, so that's one thing. Two, you know, you. I'm thinking that the Sammy Swan stuff is done, but apparently yeah. not. I think this uh, is it. And then on top of that, I think with these type of matches, the two things that I hate is you got people kind of killing themselves essentially to trying to entertain, which doesn't bode well because your top guy is recently is is on the shelf from taking a dangerous spot. And, you know, you just kind of just hold my beer <laughs> in here and everything just seems so spot heavy and a lot of stalling around for the spot. And. I think that's what hurts it some hurts it sometimes, you know, when, you know, whether it's a dive or, you know, somebody's going to take something like you just see, you know, somebody setting in place or just waiting around. And I think that's what kind of hurts it. But, you know, nonetheless, uh, Sammy gets the win. Um, still don't consider it a signature win, but he does get the win. Which is good, good for him and good for OVE. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All I got to say on him. That's fair. You are entitled to your opinion, my friend, <laughs> regardless of what people tell you. Right. All right. So I guess we can get into some news. Um, it looks like Santana. What did he? Does he have an MCL injury or an ACL? Uh, MCL. MCL. Okay. So uh, not sure how long he is going to be out for. Hopefully that doesn't uh, go into the June tapings, which I don't remember the exact dates they're taping but uh there's they taped four weeks worth of tv in uh philly so hopefully he is better by then because you don't want to have two of your champions on the shelf yeah they're they're gonna be in a hard predicament um that's why i kind of think something that they got to reevaluate sometimes is some of these matches they're going all balls to the wall and i get it you know, you want to kind of give the perception that, hey, you know, we're impact wrestling, like everything's going to be hard hitting and action packed. But, you know, these people work other shows, too. So you have to take that into account. And I don't think I've ever I can't recall a time where it seemed like so many people have been injured on the roster. If anything, the one thing I used to always think about with impact was, you know, dang, you know, their people, for the most part, tend to stay healthy. Mm. You know, they don't get hurt too much. And then you see now Pentagon and uh, Brian Cage and then now this. So um, they just got to be careful. And, yeah, obviously, if he's out, I don't, I forget what's the diagnosis with that injury. But if he misses those June tapings, those June tapings lead up to slam reversary. Yeah. Are you really going to have a situation where – and, and you know what? I actually I take that back because I think at least with tag titles we've seen this before. You can always have a substitute partner, but um, you know nonetheless, even if they don't do the substitute route, you're really gonna have some tapings where your tag team champions don't appear at all. At, and then on top of your world champion, assuming that he's not back yet, it's a pretty uh, tough deal. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, you could always do a match if they aren't. You know, you have them drop the or vacate the titles at the June tapings and then you have like a uh, a, a tournament leading up to Slammiversary. Granted, they don't have that many teams, but... But, you know. it, it, but see, I'm of the mindset too, man. And, you know, we've always, uh, in the past, we've talked about you know, people dropping titles on taping. They seem more inclined to do it at the pay-per-view. And I mm. think the mindset is, you know, people pay. You don't want to give a, a, t um, a title change on on television well twitch i should say so um i think if it, that seems a diagnostic then we wouldn't see anything till slam reversary yeah, i mean that's, that, that, that's just but my my opinion though yeah i mean I, I could see it going that way but you know still 
a, about a month till those tapings, so a lot can happen within that time. Um, we got a little news on the Eli Drake situation. There's rumors going around that Impact was looking into a one-year no-compete clause. Obviously, we have no idea about this. However, nobody had shot it down, so it's hard to say if it's uh, true or not, if it doesn't make sense why they would want to associate themselves with something this petty. Just kind of let it let it be what it is, and he's done with the company, and wash your hands of the whole situation. I just don't understand why they're not quick to dismiss such things. And I, I know that you can't dismiss every rumor, but, you know, you've, you're you trying so hard to really kind of shed that, hey, you know, we're a different company and, you know, we do things different now. And to have stuff like this out, I know for some people they believe like, well, people have it out for impact. And, you know, you're free to feel that way. I don't believe that anymore only because I don't think impact is looked at as a, as a threat compared to before when, you know, on, when they were TNA and they were at their height. Then I thought there was more of a bias only because it was seeming like it was somewhat of a, a threat, you know, because people might have been displeased with other promotions and then they were gravitating towards a TNA at the time. So I just kind of just think, you know, when you have some of these things that come out, you know, you know, they don't have a PR person to that can just deny it. Like, you know, this is incorrect. And just leave it there. But I think they let some of these things get out, whether they're true or not. And they just kind of just let people run with it. And yeah. I know there, there's an audience like, man, don't believe everything you hear. Now, if something positive comes out, everyone's quick to run with it. But when, when it's negative, we treat it like, oh, it's it's false. You know, someone yeah. has it out like it's it's all you know it's just news being pre presented to us we can speculate i just always been of the mindset though that certain things that get out these type of rumors impact they got to find a way and i, I don't know how they can do it they got to find a way to kind of uh, uh dismiss this stuff before it even really gets out because if you're somebody that was already kind of down on it or shaky at best on it and you see this it's going to turn you off i mean when, mm -hmm. it, when we both read it we're like really like you know that whole 90 day one is already terrible as it is but a year like that's really like something that means you really had something against that particular individual right i mean i could i could see them saying you know all right you're fired now you can wrestle whenever your contract was intended to expire which was only you know a couple weeks from now that that what i would be okay with but yeah even the the talk of a year just seems ridiculous yeah, um, and look, I know just given when you look back on the situation, um, yeah, we and then we've talked about it before. There's so many ways they can go go about it. But yeah, I just I, I, I really don't think it's gonna end up happening. And then on top of that, you gotta look at it, they're what, three years removed from the whole Hardy debacle. And, you know, you remember that mess, even though I felt like they were in the right in some of it, but you know, just to have that stuff. Mm -hmm. really trying to change the perception of the company like you really want to go through this again like so I, I don't know yeah and then I, I guess we could also bring up the uh the the Rohit stuff there I guess uh Wrestling Inc had interviewed him and he was uh very outspoken about things you know whether it be the booking of the Desi Hit Squad or the fact that he mentioned that the company was better when Sanjay was there it, it just Spoke volumes. I'm telling you, talent, you know, and even to, then it's probably more on a, le a smaller scale, but some of Cross's tweets, or and maybe there, I shouldn't even say his tweets. I think it's stuff that he likes or retweets, you know, just talking about how he's not on the show or whatever like that. I think it was the pay per view. Like, you know, how did we stand the pay per view, other things? Like, talent's very outspoken. And, you know, you have to wonder and like and I, like I've like I've told you, I really don't think there's there's some people on the roster that respect management and it shows. I mean, you see what happened to Eli, you know, people say Eli got fired for being so outspoken and uh, Rohit has been outspoken. So, you know, I don't know if they'll fire him. Maybe I, I'm pretty sure once his contract's up, he's probably just not going to resign. But it, it's pretty telling, you know, Um 
I, I know some can say, well, you know, not, not, you know, other people aren't saying that. Well, if you're being pushed and used, used to your, yeah, base, you have no reason that, to. Yeah. You know, just like, like they're like, why is there no wrestler siding with Eli? Well, they're in a good place in the company. Why would they? You know, they don't want to mess their mess their thing up. But yeah, it's just, just something interesting to follow. Yeah, and you know, in this landscape with so much wrestling out there, and you know, the possibility of AEW becoming a big thing, wrestlers can't be complacent. And if you know they're not being utilized, there are options out there. Oh, there's plenty plenty and especially you know where before it was kind of like well if i go to impact you know i i'll have the opportunity to do to do something but if you're not being utilized in impact well you know you can go somewhere else and not be utilized but hey you're making more money so i mean right you know at least there's some type of benefit but yeah i you know i really do worry um (laughs) folks probably hate this but i worry about with with AEW, you know, if they're able and where I kind of just believe that they got a great opportunity to really take off is some of the names that they've got. But if they really take off, man, what does that mean for impact? Not so much of them folding, but, you know, if you get, you, you, if you have them thrive, AV, ah, excuse me, AEW thriving, and then, you know, you still got the other company, like, and we already kind of see so sometimes with the viewership now it's hard to kind of sustain a certain amount of people you know what's going to be going to be left you know it's just interesting yeah no that's that's definitely true and it's you know there's been talk about them getting a tv deal and things like that and management being high on the ability to but very tough to say right now I, and i don't the last thing i just always just hold on and i know i always bring this up but it just, I guess, as a fan, what bothers me some is, and and not, and I'm not saying this from a jealous standpoint, but it's just kind of like, damn, you know, this is a startup company, and they they were able to get on TNT. Like to me, that's a big deal. Like, well, it's t- not a hundred percent confirmed yet. We will know probably Wednesday. But yes, that is definitely looking like the direction. Oh, I thought wasn't it confirmed by the that article that I shared with you? I mean, it seemed to be that way, but there was no press release or anything like that. So, I'm oh, just okay. standing in that, okay. that direction. Yeah, I, I guess. Okay, well, assuming. Well, regardless, they, go on. No, all I was just to say is just. I guess it bothers me as a fan because it's like, why were they able to, but Impact can't? You know, even when we think about when they were talking about TV deals, TNT wasn't even in the equation. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of that just has to do with the networking, like, you know, the cons being involved, owning an NFL team probably helped their cause. But it's just, you know, and a part of me is on one end, it's like, well, maybe that opens the door for other television stations to, Mm -hmm. you know, entertain. Hey, hey, maybe we want wrestling. But then, too, it just makes me wonder, like, like I said, you know, do they look at impact and just think they're not worthy of being on TV or it, I don't know. It just, that just, that's the thing that just kind of just sticks at me. Like this company that hasn't produced no shows was able to, or potentially able to land on TNT. Yeah. No, that's, that's very true. It's hard to argue with that one. I mean, it's not like impact isn't associated with TNA and everything that happened then, you know, going from spike to, what destination america to pop to the pursuit network and it's just it's tough it's been a, a fall down the mountain you know i really hate that the relationship with pop fell apart because even though and i know a lot of people didn't have pop i really felt like since spike like their relationship with pop pop seems so proud to have them on television and you know they were the highest rated show had a great time slot everything was good and you just hate that that fell through because even though now I know the talks are they're going to look to get on a network, um, I really believe, I think, even with the launch of the Impact Plus app, I think they just they want to try to be ahead of the curve with the whole digital route, and which is good, you know, because maybe that is where a lot of the wrestling will go. But I really just think that tele, you know, not having a product that you can see on television well, that's available in a lot of homes, I think it hurts. I'm yeah. obviously 
no, television is still right now the way to go. Yeah. No doubt about that. But uh you have anything else to add this week? No, I think you covered you hit all the points. I don't think there was anything else that came up this week. No, not really. So um yeah, next week we uh we go to the twenty three hundred arena. So from what I've heard, those tapings are very interesting. So uh our thoughts should be interesting next week. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I, I'll say this just for anyone who knows or has followed when they give uh um you know do tapings any company does tapings at uh, uh in Philadelphia um it, it always seems some sort of ECW revival show mm-hmm. so I fully expect the same thing I know this is not obviously it's not the Hammerstein Ballroom but uh, Hammerstein is that New York or Philadelphia I think that's New York. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know they they wrestled there too, but I know in Philadelphia that's ECW country. It's very surprising how many people still kind of remember that stuff because I always felt like the the this new age of fans like they worked probably too little when ECW and then even like WCW was at the heights of their powers. Yeah, no, that, that is uh, very true. Has the company been gone eighteen years, nineteen years, something like that? Yeah, it's been a while, man. Yeah. Crazy, crazy stuff. All right, man. Thank you for joining me this this week. Thanks for listening, guys. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.